everything that's happened. Um, I feel a little bit, you know, smiley, but happy, but a little bit melted out, you know, after everything that didn't work. And uh, poor, poor Calvin yesterday up in, in, in Bundaberg, he had a week to put together all this technology that he didn't have before uh, and, and use it to cross over to Perth and for, for us to be able to speak to Perth and Perth speak to us, see us and uh, hear the music and have that. So he did a very good job with a local guy that went up there and helped him. But uh, a lot of, lot of things going on, a lot of, lot of things coming out of everybody, not just uh, Calvin or myself, but you as well. I think we live in a world where things are just going flat bicky, right? Uh, if it's not uh, an appointment for a hospital, it's an appointment for something else. Uh, go get your phone fixed, something's not right with that, or something's wrong with the car. Unless you've got a Subaru. Subarus don't ever break down, they're great, they're the best cars out. Uh, but I don't have, I have a Subaru and another car and it's... But anyway, if you, if you have a car, if you have a boat, who's got a boat here? Anyone got a boat? Oh, I pity you then. They, 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 oh, another one. How many boats do you actually have? More than one. But it's, they take a lot of money, don't they? They take a lot of time, a lot of upkeep. Uh, dogs do, pets do. Goldfish are about the only things that don't. You just need to change the water every so often. But things, our life is full. And if you are living in the business world, um, there are so many ways to communicate today. Uh, we have things like uh, Snapchat, we have things like uh, Facebook Messenger, we have normal messaging text, we have phone calls, we have a phone that's connected to that, phone that's connected to your watch. You can be contacted in numerous ways and so many things to catch up on and you've got to check all those ones to make sure you haven't missed somebody because somebody won't talk to you this way, they only talk this way. So, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> life can come at us really heavily and from all directions. Um, in ministry, um, you feel like you've just gotten through something and all of a sudden something else comes along or some new way of thinking about something, you've got to check it out. Or someone uh, has read this book and they want you to read the book and go, do you agree with that? And you go, oh, I haven't read the book yet. What? You haven't read the book yet? What? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's hard to keep up with what's going on. And if you're like me, I, I, uh, I like to know what's going on. I like to read. Um, and so I found a way of reading books in half the time. Um, I have a, I get audio versions, so it's where the book is actually read by the author or someone else, and I speed it up to twice the speed, just so I get through the book. It's actually to help me focus, because my brain just turns off if it's not fast and heavy, so I put it on and I actually engage with it better that way. But doing life at twice the speed for everything else, it's, it's a little bit difficult, a little bit overwhelming, and, we, and before long we become empty. Our, our, our fuel tank becomes empty. Our boys, our, our three boys, are, are still receiving counselling because of Jo. <laughs> and I have her permission to share this with you. She, she took her time this morning, but that, uh, our three boys, um, when, we're, when they were younger, we always had cars that didn't seem to have something that wasn't, that wasn't working. And normally it was the petrol tank, uh, the uh, fuel gauge was normally not working on some of the cars we had when we were younger. And quite often we'd try and read the gauge of how much uh, kilometres we'd done, hoping that we filled up last time we, uh, and pushed the, the zero button so it goes back to zero. So we'd go, oh, we, we might get 400 k's and some of the cars could get 600, now you know, 800 plus. But back then there were a little bit less of that. And so we go, oh, we should be there. But if someone forgot to push the, the button to make it go back to zero to start counting again, we were in trouble and quite often we found that empty actually was empty. <laughs> and our boys used to have uh, wonderful stories of where Joe would drive and she'd go, oh, we'll be right, we'll get there, you know, got plenty of, and, and run out of fuel. Quite often as she's coasting into the petrol station with a car on angel gear. <laughs> uh, but empty. Uh, we have fuel gauges in our own lives. But some of us don't know how to read them that well. We don't know how to read that fuel gauge that we have, that, that uh, gauge that says you're running on empty. You've got little to give. Stop it. Stop. You need to break. As I said, we, we, we have medical appointments. You know, something you might fall over and, and break your arm or need to go to, to, to the hospital to, to have checkups. We have dental appointments. We have bills that come in, we have 
you know, trying to work out how much we, we, we need to pay and keep and save. And we have family that, that do things. You know, they don't get our permission, but they go ahead and, and do something and, and we, we need to help out. Maybe it's just in our own backyard with our gardening and stuff. We might not be able to do it anymore and get someone else in or there's too much. Or like now, you know, the grass was mowed around this church on Tuesday, but now it looks like it wasn't mowed at all because grass is just getting ahead of it. Our life is full of stuff, full of things. And if we don't take the time to refuel, to fill up our fuel tank, we don't have anything left to give. And quite often what happens is we snap, we break, we don't operate properly, we do silly things sometimes. Even as Christians, we can make mistakes and and, um, choose and do something wrong because we're not rested enough to actually take on board. This guy by the name of Parker Palmer said this, he said, burnout is a state of emptiness to be sure, but it does not result from giving all I have. It merely reveals the nothingness from which I was trying to give in the first place. So that's a real challenge. When you get worn out and you don't have refuel your body, whether it be spiritually or mentally or physically, if you're not doing something to refuel yourself, something that makes you actually feel good and and actually something you enjoy that sort of turns you off from all the other stuff in life, if you don't have that, then you really have nothing to give from. I don't know, as Christ followers, we say, well, Jesus is everything for me. And yes, Jesus is everything for me. But you know, Jesus had a break between things. He had to walk a long way between meetings. When we read the scripture, we go, Jesus did this, then he did this, then he did this. But we don't realize that there's a long break between the, where we got recorded. Jesus went away in the morning and spent time with the Father and renewed his spirit. I just wonder how many of us actually do that, where we take time away and renew our spirit to renew our body. So running on empty, a lot of people are running on empty and they just are ready to break or something happens and we saw COVID really magnify all those things that are going on underneath the surface in a lot of people's lives because life was put on stop and we couldn't do what we could do before. We couldn't even buy toilet paper in Australia. What's that, you know? Things that we should and we take for granted stopped. And so when things like that happen, it just reveals what's been ticking away underneath the surface. And it was a good opportunity for us to take our pulse and go, well, who who are we and who are we relying on? You know, in Australia, we've we've got nearly everything at at, at will. We can just about do anything we we want to. We have all these services that can help us and look after us if we choose to. But when it came down to the crunch, when something was stopped, we, we sort of saw who we were and who we, who we are. And for a little while, I thought we were so different. We, were, we seemed to be more courteous to each other, you know, while COVID was going on. I know there's a few people that sneezed over you and that happened to me, you know, but a lot of people were thoughtful and, and uh, opened the door and do all sorts of things. You know, it just, it just became that place, but not for long when, it's, when it came when we can go back to normal, it just seemed to turn. For for that brief moment, we could say, okay, what's going on? And maybe fix something. And sometimes when we are so stressed out, when things go and and we've we've not refueled ourselves, sometimes that's the time for us to go, okay, Lord, what's what's really going on here? And maybe take this moment to, to really connect with you. The writer, Parker Palmer, the guy I just quoted before, was like that. He was so full on. And then he came to a place of rest. He wrote this, self-care is never a selfish act. It's simply good stewardship of the only gift I have, the gift I was put on earth to offer others. The gift of himself, to be able to offer himself, to be able to share good things. And he wrote this after he found the Lord. Before that, he had just about broken down he went off to an uh, Amish uh, resort, well, sounds funny, not, not a resort, but a, a, a recluse area where people could go and pray, and he found God there. 
And he started writing these things about looking after yourself, looking after your mental health, taking time to refuel. Our Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, and most of us know this, right? We know this verse. And the other ones following, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, we can, we can put the guilt trips on, hey, we can say this verse and say, right, you shouldn't be burning out, you should be just giving it to God. Scripture says give it to him and, and uh, take his yoke upon you and we can feel very guilty and we're very good at that in the church and even if we don't say it, we certainly feel it. And if you are burned out or if you are going through a difficult time, you, feel, you might even feel guilty because that verse means, hmm, maybe we should have it all together and I really can't open that door to everybody else and say, hey, I'm struggling. But part of that yoke, part of that burden is carried by others in, in the church, especially your know, brothers and sisters. Sometimes sharing that with people, not endlessly, not repeating it, but, but sharing something and say, hey, I'm just struggling. Can I have prayer for this? Can, I, can you walk with me through this? And, and I think that's part of the yoke, teeing up with some other people who you can trust, who won't gossip, who will gossip only to God and pray to God about it with us. So we need to come to him. But how do we do that? And when we do go to God, can we stop and actually focus on that? Or are we so busy thinking about life? We're so busy thinking about that bill or that person that cut me off in the, in the, in the, in the car or that person who hasn't responded to my text right now. How dare they not answer me straight away? Or the hurt that someone did who should have known better but they hurt me still and you, and you get distracted by that instead of focusing on your time with God and being refueled. And it's really hard. Especially in the world we live in where everything's coming at us and we, we have no shortage of information. The internet gives us instant access to things that are either true or things that are made up and it's so hard to tell the difference. And you know what? That's exactly like our bodies. Our bodies can't tell the difference between things quite often. You might say, my mind can. Well, to some degree, but your body, if you keep on watching horror movies, you keep on watching intense movies or TV programs, your body feels the tension. Your body becomes tense. What you focus on, what you watch, what you do, your body doesn't know it's not real. Your body actually reacts to that. And so we need to be very careful about what we put in and trying to break that cycle. Stop looking at the phone. Stop, put it out in the lounge room. I've been trying this for the week, putting my phone out in the lounge room at night time and, and, and it's got my alarm on it, but I just have to do something else. And my iPad, my watch, they all go beep beep through the night. <laughs> so that it's out in the lounge room now. So if you ring me, I'm sorry, you have to ring triple A. It's hard. It's hard to break that. You actually have to be a rebel to not do the things the world would have us do, to be always connected, to be always on call, to be always looking at something, to be always trying to find out what the next thing is. And I'm guilty of that. Things come and I've never, never seen it before or discussed it. Yesterday I was up with a bikey up at Bundaberg and he mentioned something going, no, I've never heard of that before. Uh, it has something to do with Christianity and that, but I go, I've never heard that before. So now I need to go and, and think about that so I can respond to that. Uh, we... And I need to do this. I really need to do this. I need to practice what I'm saying. And so doing that with my phone is the first thing. And it's something I've been practicing for a long time. You've heard me speak about it before. Is, is something I'm going to show you shortly. But before I get there, anyone know who this guy is? Yeah, that's it, Gandhi. He was approached by a mother who was so distraught by her child's incessant addiction to sugar. Constantly eating sugar, so she brought her son to Gandhi and said, can you tell my son to stop eating sugar? He goes, okay, bring him back in two months' time. So she thought, okay, <laughs> all right. So she went away, 
come back in two months' time, he said, and she said to Gandhi, uh, can you remember me? I asked you to, to tell my son not to eat sugar. She said, yes, 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 I remember that. So he turned to her son and said, stop eating sugar. And she goes, is that it? Why did you just say that the last time we were here? Why did you have to wait two months? He says, because I wasn't going to tell him to do something that I wasn't doing. And I have a sweet tooth. And I need to stop eating sugar. I'm sharing with you something that I struggle with and I'm putting things into place. And I think as we go into the world, that as our testimony is that we rely on Jesus, that we, we get refueled from him and times with him and finding things that are creative for us to do, whether it be working with wood or whether it be fishing or whether it be flying or whether it be whatever it is, listening to music or playing music, whatever we're doing to help refuel us. We need to be doing that before we can share with others. In ministry, unfortunately, in Australia, there's a lot of pastors leaving. There's something like 42% actually leaving in America. And in Australia, there was a, a recent survey where 35% of Australian ministers are considering quitting. Not because they don't trust the God, but because they're so overwhelmed by everything that's going on that they just don't feel like they've got the capacity to be able to deal with it. Don't like the colour of the carpet. Don't like the fact that glare comes in there. Don't like the colour of the wall. Don't like the food, you know. Then there's the, I'm sick, can you come visit me? Um, all those things that are good and need to know, but after a while, if you don't get a break, you don't refuel, you just fizzle out. That's the same with other jobs as well. It's the same with being a mum, <laughs> being a dad, being a manager. We need to pause and take time to break and we need to remember that we have someone we can take things to and, and quite often forget to do that starting a ritual start a ritual in the morning so get up and have devotions what does that mean it means to quiet your mind and listen to god how do you quiet in a busy mind go to sleep <laughs> without going to sleep so you can actually hear from god how do you quiet your mind how do you do those sort of things how do, We've got promises in Scripture. We've got Hebrews where it says, For we do not, we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathise with us or our own weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. It's all about Jesus. Jesus understands. He knows what it's like to be human. He came. We don't have to go through a priest or a pastor to get to God. We have a great high priest, and that is Jesus. He understands us. We, even if we don't understand what we're going through and go, I just don't know, Lord, I give it to you. I give it to you. But putting that into practice, doing something about it, to change the habits that we have, the habit of looking at the phone first thing in the morning, the habit of turning on the radio and listening to the news, the habit of, instead of doing those things first, or even the habit of getting up and going, oh, not another day, to break those. You might say, you're more than those habits. You might say, surely I'm more creative than that. Well, you try and put your toothbrush in another drawer or try and put your keys somewhere else uh, or, or uh, drive with the blinkers on the other side of the car. We've we got, we got a Subaru and I've got a, a European car and the Subaru is this side and the European car is this side. So sometimes I put the windscreen wiper on instead of the blinker and sometimes... But habits, and we need habits. We need to, we need habits. We need to, you know, be able to put in our, our clothes, you know, brush our teeth, you know, all that sort of stuff without having to think about it. Otherwise, we'd burn ourselves out. But some of the habits we've got are not helping us. <laughs> They're actually hindering us. The habit of habitually looking at what other people think about me or think about what's going on by looking at our smartphone, Facebook, and the news or the paper first instead of going to God first and recognizing what he thinks about us change that habit do a new habit there are plenty of helps out there that can help us with that some great books the power to change how to change habits by uh, craig rochelle you can get that on audio you can watch some of these things on on youtube this one here get your life back by john aldridge he wrote captivating for women and and wild at heart for men two great books Excellent books. This book is Get Your Life Back in a World That's So Busy. 
how to be, have a benevolent detachment. You know how we had to have social distancing? I try to change it to this word, benevolent detachment. That means good for you, good for me. So detaching yourself, having some time away from things, turning off things. It's a good for you and it's good for me to have a time of rest. He actually goes and, and created an app. So I know I talked about phones and keeping off them as much as you can. But there's a really good app that he has, which is about, it's about meditating. It's basically listening to scripture about God. Um, you can get it both for Apple and get it for Android. And basically you listen to scripture and someone reading it, the author, and some music, and you're just focusing on that. Because sometimes it takes a bit to get through the, the old noggin to slow down. Back in 2019, when I had care fatigue and had a long time to come back, this app really helped me focus on God and hearing someone talk about God and seeing beautiful scenery play out in front of me just really helped me stop and focus on God. Creating a habit to do something like that, do that. Create a habit to have a break, to have a gap. I love this, this, uh, this saying or this quote, what makes a fire burn is space between the logs, a breathing space. What makes a Christian burn for God is having space to breathe and to take God in so that we can burn for him instead of just being snuffed out, smothered, having a space, creating a space. I'm a bit thick and so God sometimes hits me on the head a few times. And some of the things he does is he, he brings nature into my life and I was out here with a ute just parked out here and I was really going oh lord there's so much going on all of a sudden this bird flew in and it was a butcher bird and it was unusually sitting there staring at me twerking away I said oh lord thank you for this gorgeous bird that's just amazing thank you god and quite often when I when I'm feeling that I, I'll see something that's so beautiful and quite often it's birds they'll even come and nick my coffee just to say, hey, you don't need this coffee. <laughs> when we were up at Bunny Mounds, we had lots of birds around and of course feeding them and this guy came in, he came in the house as well and just wanted to have a chat and I just got to admire how beautiful he is and how wonderful God has created him. Look at those colours, reds and greens, blues and we, we had um, um, lots of different sorts of birds with blue eyes and stuff. It was just amazing. And you think you can escape from this? You think you can escape from God? No. Even at the 10th floor of a skyscraper, a bird flew up and said, hello. <laughs> We're at Palcon. Lots of things happening. Big meetings. And here's this bird come up and he just sat there and chatted to me. No, I'm not saying, God, you ain't all got to get a bird and you should all look for a bird. I'm just saying, this so happens to happen and I appreciate how God is and how beautiful things are. And it seems to have taken this to really help me. So I appreciate nature. Maybe you just need to maybe look at some pictures of, of things that are beautiful. This is over our Harvey Bay. Uh, looking out under the wing of a plane, just going up with a friend. And I actually feel the most peace when I'm flying. This guy flies really well, so I feel very peaceful. We're flying and we can look at the, look at the, look at the water, look at the, look at the sand. Isn't that just gorgeous? Look at the colours. Just admire the colours. God's creation. It's just beautiful. Breathe in. God, you're wonderful. Breathe out all the garbage. Breathe in. God, you're wonderful. Maybe you can't get up on a plane. Maybe just go to the beach in the morning. This is one of the walks that we did while we're away. Isn't the beach beautiful? Isn't the beautiful place here in, this, here in the washing of the waves? God's creation, taking a moment to notice that instead of just driving by, get out of the car, go for a walk on the beach, take your shoes off, go into the water. Isn't God great? Just appreciate that. Maybe it's just the sunset you need to look at or the sunrise. It doesn't matter what the landscape is. It might be muddy, but it can still be gorgeous. It can still be gorgeous. Just take it in. Look at the colours across the road here, just across here, 4 o'clock in the morning on Sunday mornings. That's, that's that photo. How beautiful is it? God's sunrise. Look at those colours. Appreciate what God has done. All of creation is pointing out to God. All of it is pointing. Let us remember that. Remind ourselves of that. Look at the sky, how it changes. Isn't God amazing? God is truly amazing how things change. Well, maybe you can't get up early in the morning like me. 
Maybe say you're nuts, Adrian. Four o'clock in the morning, not, maybe you just need to walk past the garden as you come in the church and check out the flowers and say, God, look at the creation. Maybe you've got flowers at home. Maybe you should get your husband or someone else to buy you flowers so you can have them in your house. So every time you see them or smell them, you go, God, let me take this moment to, to pause and think about you. Interrupt your life. Put something beautiful in there to appreciate God. And of course, we've got these wonderful teddy bear sunflowers, haven't we? Just amazing. Something different just to help us. You might say, I've got no, no real plants at home. I've just got weeds. Well, look, even weeds can look nice through the sun, right? These are weeds across the road. The sun coming through. Isn't it wonderful how beautiful the sun looks through that? Just appreciate what God has done. We've got lots of beautiful places that God has created in Meribah, just locally, just where we are, even the river. We can go down. That's early in the morning again. And here's one of my favourite verses, 1 Peter 5, 7. Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares for you. He cares for you. And that's a great scripture to memorize and to repeat. And as you see something beautiful like a flower or a beautiful bird, or even enjoy something that someone's created, a, a motorbike that sounds really loud, and, and you go, God, you created humans who make, God, thank you. I give all my cares and worries to you. Make time. Set an alarm on your phone or your watch or put a rock in your shoe so every time you feel that rock, you go, God, you're wonderful. I hope you feel it all the time. Just to stop and remember and refuel. It's amazing how God refuels us when we stop and pay attention to him. I hope you found some of these helpful and maybe you will apply some of these things to your life. Um, I know it's really helped me and helped others to do that. And that app is, is just absolutely brilliant to use. Uh, if you can do that, if you can't, let me know and I might be able to do something else for you. But just a pause. And certainly if you don't have time in the morning where you're actually reading God's word and pondering over that, please come and see me and I'll help you find something that can do that. Uh, a book that you might be able to use or show you how to go through scripture because we do need to be refueled by God. And find a, a hobby, a good hobby, a hobby that refuse, refuels you. Something where you can create something, whether it's with timber, whether it's flower arranging, whether it's making music or listening to music. I love hearing my wife play at home on the piano. She's just in another world playing away and, and normally a hymn or something. And it just brings closer to God. We've got so many things we can do. If you don't have any idea, come see me. I'll give you some. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for uh, the opportunity to stop. And, and Lord, even though this wasn't planned for a year, but maybe it was your plan all the way, Lord, and, and we give that to you. Lord, we pray that as we go, that we would put things in place to remind us of your love, remind us that you care, remind us that you want to refuel us, that no matter what comes our way, whether it's sickness or health, whether it's riches or poor, Lord, that uh, we can give you glory and that, that everything can bring us closer to you. Father God, for those this morning who maybe are struggling, maybe they've been hurt by somebody that's done something that should have done, known better, maybe they uh, um, are struggling with uh, a relative, maybe they're struggling with a friend or maybe someone here this morning is just struggling with something, a trauma that's happened in the past and finding it hard to focus on you and those th thoughts come to their mind. Maybe someone here is uh, in the thick of things, taking on too much. Maybe they have just keep on going with adding things to their life and, and just life is just getting out of control, Lord, for them too. Or maybe there's someone here, Lord, that everything is just so cruisy and so nothing going on that they just don't feel like worshipping you or, or, or spending time with you but find themselves totally drained Lord this morning I pray that they would accept uh, your reach to them today through this message that they would accept that they need to put in place a time where they come to know you, a time where they get refueled by you and your word and your spirit and to acknowledge your beauty around them Father God, our world is full of good and bad things. 
Our world has so many things that come at us through, through media that it's selling papers, it's selling uh, news articles, it's selling TV programs, Lord, but, and to sell they feel like they have to punch fear into us. And Lord, it says in your word that we're not to fear men, but we are to fear you. And when we fear you and trust you, that cancels out all the other fears in our life. When we trust you, when we put you first, it cancels that all out. Lord, help us to do that this week. Help us to find something creative to do to put this into place in each of our lives. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you that you're here with us. Lord, we pray that you bless this, uh, the closing song and then, Lord, that you bless the time of, of fellowship afterwards around some food to eat. We give this all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.